Good afternoon, my sweet friends, and welcome back to Peaceful Bird Gardens. I wanted to just take a moment to give you an update on the garden and what is happening, what's growing, what's working, what's not. And I know I'm not wearing my hat. It's weird for me too, but it's actually closer to evening time, so I didn't necessarily need it. I'll just flip the camera around and just kind of talk about what is going right and what we may need to alter in the future. All right, my sweet friends, this is our banana section that I talked about in a previous video. This is where we are growing our taller bananas, our ladyfinger. I have a double Mahoy in here. I also have some uh, dwarf namois in here, but I have found that the dwarf namois aren't quite as dwarf as I would like. I'm keeping the namois in, and I'm, I'm keeping the namois in here, moving them from my other banana section because I'd like to have the other banana section for true dwarfs like the dwarf cavendish and I actually don't mind the dwarf cavendish too much. This is a dwarf cavendish. This is the last plant that we had over here and she just flowered but as you can see she didn't put out all that much fruit. We maybe get a single hand and I'm be I believe it's because it's in a ton of shade over here so that's just something for us to keep in mind in the future that the dwarf bananas over here it's just a little too shady these will be fine these will form just they should form just nicely but again we would get better production if we had them in a different space so let's pan around here chaya always a favorite and I did another video on our passion vine because it is fruiting prolifically right now. Look for that video to come soon. Our passion vine is just fruiting ridiculously. There's just fruit everywhere. So I'm super excited about that. I just have a wall of green that borders me and my neighbor's property. And luckily my neighbors are super wonderful, super, super cool people. And as you can see, the flowers are just crazy gorgeous and these draw in the large carpenter bees we just love those the really really great big carpenter bees peanut butter tree we got flowers last year we're hoping to get fruit this year our young barbados cherry she put out flowers but she hasn't really put out much fruit so to speak of yet so we're uh we're waiting on that now this is our southern home grape and it is loaded, loaded with grapes this year. I did a really good job pruning this year and I will hopefully do a video on how to prune that in the future. So yeah, there are just grape clusters all over. And that's a beautiful vine. So the this grape is a hybrid. It's a hybrid between a muscadine grape and a table grape. So you have to like muscadines to like this particular variety because the skin is thick and they do have seeds, but I grew up with muscadines, so I actually love them. Now, all along, oops, some chop and drop that I missed. So all along our fence line, we have dune sunflower, I'm sorry, Bolivian sunflower, Mexican sunflower, Tythonia diversifolia. This plant here is what feeds our system. This is what I use for chop and drop. This is what I use for compost tea. And I chop it constantly, constantly. It never flowers, sadly, because we're just constantly chopping it. So our Grimachama, she has not quite uh, flowered or fruited yet, but she's not very old, so we're still waiting for that our mulberry oh my goodness you guys if you can plant one plant if you only have space and you really love berries mulberries are it so this is a dwarf everbearing mulberry and let me back up to give you a little perspective i keep this pruned very small very short i'm i prune it fairly regularly so as you can see there are just tons of fruit all over the place and we've been harvesting for a couple of weeks now and there's still lots and lots of fruit in here and yeah, i'm gonna have some if i don't mm, so tasty i love these <laughs> so the mockingbirds the mockingbirds come through so i have a little baby coconut cream mango in the back and this year she put out one mango one little baby mango but that's fine because she's still quite small so i'm not super concerned about we're putting out a whole bunch of production. Now, underneath the ground cover, that's all Brazilian or Sisu spinach. 
our peach tree which i also just recently did a video on so look out for that she's loaded with fruit but <laughs> i didn't do so great on the pruning on this particular tree last year so i'm going to have to make some improvements going forward and i'll share that as i do it hopefully and in the back there i've got fahoa if you can see that above the that's fahoa back there and we've got a couple of flowers this year but again these are fairly young so i'm still waiting for them to put out and we have turk cap hibiscus turks cap hibiscus back in there the the flowers are edible but honestly i put that in there mostly for the hummingbirds and the butterflies but the flowers are edible i just don't find them particularly tasty now i designed this like a spine so as you can see, there's a, there's a boardwalk here that we built out of reclaimed and um, old scrap wood and some old wood that people gave us and some new wood. We designed this as the central main pathway. And then this is our annual planting bed, which I also recently did a video on. Look out for that. I do successive plantings of beans in here throughout the early summer and into regular summertime. And then in September, October, I'll either I'll harvest the beans if there are any, smush them down with mulch or other chop and drop and then plant uh, for the fall. But yeah, I have pathways that go off into each section. <laughs> My permaculture mentor who I followed online actually was all about more plant, less path. These are some of my annuals that kind of just pop up. So I have collard greens. These are collard greens that just pop up in the garden. I also have mustard that is going to seed that just pops up all over the place. The uh, curly kale I planted and it did really, really beautifully for us this year. So I'm going to do more of that in the future. We have seminole pumpkins in through here. And I have a cute little pumpkin down in there if you can see it. I love Seminole pumpkins. They are incredibly tasty, but Seminole pumpkins need some space. You see the size of those leaves compared to my hand. They're huge, gorgeous plants, but huge, and they can take over. So I've got another collard green. <laughs> I had to think about that for a second. Another collard green in there, and our broadleaf mustard, Florida broadleaf mustard, which I love this plant, but it's gone to seed now. So she's done for the year. Pomegranates back in there. Another mulberry. My nasturtiums. We also have figs. I'm gonna, I'm gonna create a fig hedge all in that space. And then I have flowers that line our annual planting bed. That was just a personal choice. I just like flowers and like to see flowers. So this is Luffa. And I also recently did a video on that. So look for that. This is our another arbor where I have uh, Southern Home grapes. I really love, love, love grapes. When I found out that I could grow them, I was like, why not? This is Piper Lobot. It's an edible green that I did. I, I believe I did a profile on this when I was talking about perennial greens that'll last through the summertime. This can be very weedy though. So I, I try to contain it in this space. It likes more shady environments in my experience so we kind of keep it contained underneath of the shade of the arbor here this is our dwarf banana section this is where i keep all of the the smaller bananas because out here in this in the main food forest area i don't want a whole ton of shade going on i don't want big tall banana plants shading my other plants and also we found out by experience back here that during storms or high wind big tall bananas they're just they're just not a good idea that was just our experience so now we're going with more dwarfing varieties in through here yellow dragon fruits this is a yellow and this is just old scrap wood that i use to construct this another mulberry but this is just a placeholder i'm going to eventually replace this with a, a persimmon tree and i have a little baby persimmon in there but she's a stick she, she hasn't come out of her dormancy yet they take quite a while and through here i have a miracle fruit that i got off of a clearance aisle it was a clearance aisle find she's coming back just nicely though she'll be she'll be just fine and in here i have yerba mate 
Yerba mate tea. I'm very excited about this plant. I really love yerba mate, um, mate, as they say in South America. So I'm excited to have mate, my own, my own mate. Another pomegranates. This dwarf Cavendish is putting out a flower as we speak, which is very exciting. Most of my brassicas here, this is another brassica. This was a tetswa. Tetswa. This was Tetswa. And this was a volunteer Tetswa, but we harvested off of it quite quite a bit. And now she's bolted and gone to seed. Blueberries. I have blueberries, guys. But blueberries have been a struggle for me. So I'm I have some blueberries that are doing really well, but I'm not going. I planted so many blueberries in the beginning and they just did not do well for us. So I'm holding off on planting more. I love blueberries. They're probably one of my favorites fruits to eat just in general. I eat blueberries every single day. But I'm struggling with getting them to thrive. So this one's doing really well. We'll just have to wait and see. I plan to keep improving the soil, continuing to acidify the soil so that blueberries will like it here, essentially. Sweet tamarind. This is a sweet tamarind tree. Again, all of my trees are kept dwarf. And some people might think that's very crazy, but that's all right. You may be right, I may be crazy, but it just may be a lunatic you're looking for. <laughs> <laughs> can't help myself this is a cherry of the rio grande and it put out six fruit this year I, the fruit's good it is uh she's she's just a baby she she just kind of shot up and then flowered but this is what the fruit look like and i'll go ahead and pull this off and show it to you they have these cute little tassels at the bottom just like most eugene you know all eugenia fruits really do in some form they had this cute little, and my camera's terrible at close-up. They had this cute little tassel-y thing at the bottom. So I'm going to flip the camera around. Hi. So let's give this a taste. Let me see if I can get in better lighting. There we go. Let's see what this tastes like. Big seed. Look at the size of that seed. Huge. Hmm. Yep. It tastes like a mild cherry taste. It's, it's really all I get. So, yeah. Cool. Hopefully that'll get planted. Or, you know, sprout. This section used to be an orchard. I had apples in here. I'm not lying. I had apples and pears. They did not do well. The low chill apples did not do so great for us. This little baby here... This is a baby Florida Prince that I am training currently. And this is Jamaican cherry or Mantingia Calabra, Calabra, Mantingia, um, loaded with flowers, getting ready to hopefully fruit. The bees have been all over it. So that is another yellow dragon fruit, dragon fruit structure. This is where I had some tomatoes and there's another blueberry there that is doing really beautifully. It's actually loaded with blueberries right now. So some of our blueberries are doing really well. This is a site where I had tomatoes uh, previously. And we have got pineapples everywhere. I've got about five pineapples fruiting at the moment. You can see that cute little baby in there hiding underneath of the tomato plant. We plant very densely in here, you guys. We do. It's very densely planted in through here. And it works really, really well for us. The pears and the apples got fire blight. It's just not the right climate for them. I think I love to experiment. So I figure what the heck, why not give it a try? So this little space over here, I keep, there's another pineapple right there. This little space over here, I keep for propagation. That's like my little propagation station. But in the summertime, I will have to put a shade cloth over it because otherwise they will just pour little plants over there will absolutely fry. Let's take a walk, get a good perspective of the garden. Take a walk back through the arbor. Oh, I just walked through a spider web. Nothing makes you a ninja like walking through a spider web. This is a Japotacaba. Say that five times fast. Japotacaba. So they actually fruit on the bark. These are related to Simpson stoppers, believe it or not. My native baby up front. And you can see that most clearly in the leaves. So the leaves are very similar to a Simpson stopper, except for these are more uh, lanceolate 
in nature. And the bark. Bark is very reddish and tends to peel, just like a Simpson stopper. That's so cool to me. The nasturtiums, they're still going crazy. They're still going crazy. I hope they last. I really, really do. I hope I'm wrong about them and that they will last through the summertime, but I don't think so. This is our Mexicola avocado and it is fruiting. It fruited last year. So Mexicola is a hybrid. It is uh, very Haas like if you like Haas avocados, avocados. this is very Haas like. So let me see. She doesn't have a lot of fruit. She's just a baby tree. But she does have some fruit going. You can eat the skin on these. Oh no, one of them fell off. That's such a bummer. If you see those cute little baby avocado fruit there. And then there's another little cute little baby avocado fruit right there. So I don't allow my young small fruit trees to hold too much fruit because I want them to put all of the energy into roots. I don't want them putting all that energy into fruiting when they're this young. I really want them to establish a good root system. In here, I'm going to do a video on this particular basil very soon because I love this basil. I have two types of basil that I just absolutely love because it's so bulletproof in the garden. This is African um, blue basil and I also have cardinal basil that just does wonderfully. This is very easy to produce via cuttings, to reproduce via cuttings. The uh, cardinal basil tends to spread around via seeds. So this I propagate quite frequently. I give it to to people and give it away to people because it is such a wonderful basil the bees absolutely go crazy for these sweet little flowers it's a pretty strong basil so you don't need a lot of it but we use it constantly it's 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 constantly in our diet now this is this poor sad little baby this is a sweet top and it has been struggling with something but the new growth that's coming out is looking okay. This is the last remnants of my large tomato arbor. You have to forgive me. I live in a neighborhood, so you may hear my neighbors. And again, more. This is, and this is why this happens. So this is collard greens. And I let all of my annuals go to seed. And then the birds or, you know, some other way, they just get spread all over the garden. I just kind of do this and they just pop up pretty much everywhere. So that are, those are plants that I don't have to plant, which is so exciting to me. This is jujube. This is a sugarcane jujube. And I also have a shanzi lee jujube. Uh, so far, this has not been the most positive experience with jujubes here in this particular climate. So we'll see how they do. I was actually surprised they came out of dormancy, but they are flowering right now. If you can see those teeny tiny little flowers that are on there. So we'll see how that goes. Another Barbados cherry. Again, it's young, hasn't flowered yet. <laughs> My sad little jackfruit tree. Oh, she's just not loving life. I'm going to replace this. This was a seedling. I'm going to replace this with a cultivar. Um, I think I saw something called honey nugget or golden nugget or something like that at our local Tampa Asian nursery. So I'm going to take this out and replace it with one of those actual grafted cultivars and another mulberry. But honestly, back in this space, the birds get it before I tend to. So that is an ice cream bean baby. And again, I'm keeping it small, although she just keeps wanting to shoot up into the sky. This is experimental. We'll see how this goes and whether it actually works keeping this particular plant small. So Mexican green cream guava. I really love guava. Another pomegranate. So I have, let's see, four kinds of pomegranates. I have, I want to say the Azadi and the Serenevi. I have Azadi and Serenevi, two of each. So I'm excited about those. They flowered this year, but they dropped their flowers. They've only been in the ground for maybe a year or a year and a half. So we're excited to see what they do. I have seen other pomegranates close by that are loaded with flowers and they look much older. So I'm excited. This is a starfruit tree. 
and this is a cultivar and I can't remember the name of it so I will try to list that somewhere so that you can see what the name what the name is this is an interesting one so this is dwarf tamarillo and it's let's see if I can find any fruit yeah. so as you can see there's these little fuzzy green fruits right there they start out as these cute little flowers and let me see if I can find another one that has flowers I don't know if you can see that it's probably too dark this is related to ground cherries tomatoes it's in that solanaceae nightshade family the leaves are ridiculously smelly <laughs> actually but they're really beautiful and the fruit tastes very similar to like a ground cherry but more bitter in my opinion and through here i've got more pineapples like i said i've got about five pineapples fruiting right about now and pineapples i find to be the easiest really um, they have been the easiest thing to grow and what happens is that once you get a pineapple you end up with these cute little baby plants that come off and it's so this is this is a cultivar I bought this at an actual nursery at a fruit tree nursery this is sugarloaf this is sugarloaf but what if you take a top if you take a pineapple top and I'll do a video on pineapples if you take a pineapple top and grow it from that it takes two years to get a pineapple if you take one of these little babies once you already have a plant established if you take one of the little babies and plant that you'll have pineapples within a year sometimes less once you get pineapples going you have pineapples going and as I mentioned our ground covers are all sisu spinach for the most part my husband loves sisu spinach um, Brazilian spinach it's super hardy it's super beautiful it attracts pollinators it's a wonderful plant I've got ground cherries in through here. That is a soursop there. I have Mauritius, Mauritius lychee in this space over here. And she's doing really beautifully. It's just a baby though. So we also have natal plum. I have the dwarf variety. The dwarf variety, it's being covered by some of my ground cherries, but that's the dwarf variety. They're gorgeous plants. I just love the foliage on those. Put out white flowers, and then the flowers turn into fruit. That is the regular, larger variety that'll turn into a large shrub. And then we have basil, more African uh, bluebush basil. I've got a little bit of cassava growing here. I've got more cassava over there on my other dragon fruit arbor. We have arbutina olives that we are growing as so I'm, I have two plants same hole <laughs> again try and keep them small and we'll see how this goes I, I talked to a local resident not long ago who is growing lots of olives and he has been very successful with them so and then this is back in here this is our infrastructure area one of our rain barrels I've got more cassava right there that is actually a red fruited um, dragon fruit and its structure so she's starting to flop over and hang and hopefully we'll get fruit off of that soon more um, cape gooseberries or ground cherries as are also known and Everglades tomatoes everywhere and if you peek inside of the Everglades tomatoes you'll see a little pineapple growing in there with the tomatoes and oh my goodness I can't help myself these are so delicious so yeah Oh, also Nepales, Nepales cactus. I'm not a huge fan of the fruit, but I like the plant. And then our pond. So in over here, The pond now has gambusia fish in it for mosquitoes. Those are little mosquito eating fish. This is another variety of avocado. And oh, I just love this tree. It's so beautiful. She's coming along really nicely. Hasn't flowered or fruited yet, but she's super young. This is a Brogdon avocado, another kind of a Haas ish type avocado. So I'm very excited for, for the fruit on that. And then over on the other side, you may not be able to see it. I got this for free 
This is a Marcus pumpkin, avocado growing in with the, the tomatoes. So this is a Marcus pumpkin avocado tree. And those are more of the slim cottos or, you know, the Florida cottos. And for bath and sweet little pond. This though, jackfruit. Gorgeous jackfruit tree. She's doing really well. This is also a seedling. So I'm excited to see what the fruit quality is from a seedling as uh, compared to a cultivated variety, a grafted variety. And our dwarf, <laughs> if you can call her that, our dwarf Namwa is also getting ready to push out a flower with fruit. So these are exciting times at Peaceful Bird Gardens. All right, my sweet friends, I hope you enjoyed that little update on our very productive garden. Now, I highly recommend that you just grow something. Throw some seeds around, throw a plant in the ground. You never know, you might get some fruit. You don't have to do it on the ridiculously large scale that we have done, but I do highly recommend that get out in your garden, grow some stuff. It's really fun. And eating things from your backyard that you've grown with your own two hands. There's just nothing like that, my sweet friends. If you like this kind of content, growing food in your own space, healthy food. If you like growing natives for wildlife, come on the journey with us. Give us a like, hit subscribe, and I hope to see you again on Peaceful Bird Gardens. Have a lovely evening, my sweet friends.